writer, business strategist, content expert, and I want to share with you what's been going on that's different and game-changing in my business in the last six months. And it's this little thing called a personal story. And when I say personal story, it means something that's happened to me we all have personal stories that's changed the choices that I've made in my life or that's changed the thoughts in my head or changed some reality. And I'm really learning how important it is to share these stories, but there's been a little bit of a byproduct of sharing these stories that I didn't expect to happen. Now, this signature story that I've been working on. I've been studying under Bo Eason. If you don't know who he is, go Google him. His personal story of it, his book is coming out. Just so much good stuff from this guy that teaches you how to cut to the chase, as they say in terms of in the movies. It's like, cut to the chase with your story, nail that point, and evoke some emotion from your audience because your story is what connects you. It's like the connective tissue that people go, oh, me too. I felt like that. And when the story is told right, when it's about the audience and how the audience is doing, it connects you because they understand you as a human. They understand the joy and the anger and the frustration and the happiness and the laughter and that like emotional journey that movies or TV shows take you on. You, you learn a lot about a character from what you see and what you hear. And you decide whether you like them or you don't based on the stories that you're seeing on the screen that they tell. And your audience is doing the exact same thing when you choose to share your personal stories. They're deciding whether they like you or they don't. Most times they do. When it's a really good story, it helps them choose you and it helps them understand what you're all about without you having to say, I am very hardworking, I am very kind, I am very loving, I'm a good mom, I know my stuff. Like whatever you wanna get across to people, right? Your story will convey that and your story will tell things you know, about you that you don't even have to say and people believe it. And it's true, it's your truth because you're taking them on the journey. It's like a good book you can't put down. You're so engrossed in that story. And most good stories have conflict or have the underdog. And as business owners, you know, we forget what that's like sometimes when we first start. When we are overweight or broke or don't have the answers or losing our stuff with our kids or, you know, whatever it is that we got going on, we want people to see us perfectly polished, well put together, got our stuff together. And that's not really what people are interested in. People are interested in the quote unquote highlight reel. Hey guys joining me, Stacy and Mattis, nice to see you. Um, people are interested in the struggle because a lot of people, we all experience struggle. We all have times when we're down and out and we don't know how to pick ourselves back up. So, Sharing your story gives people hope. Sharing your story gives people knowledge. And your story is a reason why you made a change in your life, right? It's maybe that personal story that you maybe don't want to tell because it evokes emotion in you. Or it's maybe something that you wish someone never knew about you. If it's a story of being overweight or struggling with addiction or mental health or something that a family member did or said or, you know, an abusive situation that happened in your life, whatever that is, that's real hard to talk about. You know, you got to consider, are all the details necessary or what is the main point that you want to get across because it's usually connection. It's, I went through this and I survived and here's how I did it. And I'm here to give you hope too because 
isn't that, you know, one of the most, like, just the greatest thing when you're down and out and someone just reaches out to you. And even if, you know, they're not trying to fix you, they're not trying to solve your problem. They're just like, I'm here, I'm here for you. I'm holding, like the, my woo woo friends say I'm holding space for you, which I, I love that term, right? It's like, I'm not trying to fix you. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm not trying to talk over you and get us out of this uncomfortableness. It's like, I'm sitting in this uncomfortableness with you. And that's really true empathy. And that's really what it's all about. And, you know, a byproduct of that, which I didn't realize, was your story not only heals others, it heals you. And the story that I've been telling of how I grew up, I never wanted to tell that story. I never wanted people to know what happened behind closed doors in my family. And it's just stuff that I just would never want to talk about. Like we wouldn't be sitting here having a cup of coffee or having a glass of wine. And I wouldn't just blurt out the story to you. It's not something that I want to commonly share, but having to, because I know the power of it and I've seen the power of it with audiences sharing on stages, sharing in workshops. And now in May, I'm going to be a part of a bestseller book on Amazon called uh, The Beauty of Authenticity. And it's all about sharing your truth and sharing your story. And now I'm putting this story in a book that I never, you know, a, a worldwide book that I never thought I would ever want to share. But exactly like Stacy's saying there, and yeah, good, Matt, as you're talking about your story, you're using it, it's amazing. Like Stacy's saying, you know, it gives people hope. And that's, that's why I'm kind of getting out of my own way and getting over it. And my story is growing up with that critic. And I think people do the best that they can with what they got, but there was a legacy of emotional abuse that happened in my family. And it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And it wasn't until, you know, I received some text messages after 30 years of this that I was upset and distracted and I was holding on to that steering wheel and I was bawling and I was shaking and I was crying and something in my gut said, stop. And I slammed on that brake as I was pulling out of an intersection and just as I looked up, the transport truck just missed me and almost wiped me out. I was seconds away from something serious happening because I was letting something serious happen for 30 years of my life. And that was the moment that made me say enough is enough. You know, and that's just a small piece of my story, but I would never want to share the way I was parented, the experiences that I've had. I was a hundred pounds overweight and just holding on to all of that abuse and that trauma and all that. I wore it like armor. And my hope is to share that with people so they can see that you can break that legacy of abuse. You can parent the way you want. You can pick the career path that you want. You can start valuing yourself and making some changes in your life to get happier and healthier, regardless of the number on a scale or the size clothing that you wear, because that's BS. If you followed my journey, you know I've been all sorts of shapes and sizes in my life and healthy was never dependent on the number on a scale. It was so much more than that when we look at all those layers. So telling my story, it's forced me to forgive because I have to tell it from my mom's point of view. I have to tell it from my point of view and holding on to anger makes it about me and not about the audience that I'm trying to heal and give hope to. So telling it has helped me process it a little bit better. And it's like the best form of therapy you can ever have when you start telling it more and you start living it more and you start feeling it more. And that's been just the really interesting byproduct of speaking it and writing it and saying it is I used to have all this anger and victimy almost kind of mentality. And now it's like I flipped it to forgiveness and I flipped it to love. 
And I, I love sharing the story now because I feel like it's the gift that's been given to me. I wouldn't be the kind of mom that I am if I didn't have those experiences. I wouldn't have the compassion that I have for people that are struggling with mental health in their family or being overweight. I wouldn't have that if I didn't walk in those shoes and have my own experience with that. So all of that is a gift. You know, I did an interview in Toronto a couple weeks ago and I probably didn't pick the right outfit to wear. I mean, we were sitting, first of all, we were sitting in this interview in chairs and I had a little bit of like a tighter shirt on. And the first thing when I looked at myself in this interview, I was like, oh my God, I hate my fat roll. Like it was the, didn't even matter the great things that came out of my mouth. I instantly zeroed in on that. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I should post this interview. And then I was like, Lisa, everybody's got fat rolls when they sit. Every woman does has had a baby. Moms, we know, right? It's like, or we've all had photos or pictures or angles or things of us that maybe don't make us feel great. But again, I'm like, is this about me or is this about my audience? This is about my audience. So I'm going to share this sucker because I dropped some good nuggets in there about how to grow your business. So, you know, your story helps you heal yourself. Your story helps you see yourself and see others in a different light. And it really drives it back to that why and that connection. So I want to encourage you to share your story. Maybe it's not going to be publicly on Facebook or speeches like me or in a book. But with your friends, with your family, with the people you trust, with other people that are struggling, start talking about your day to day. Stop showing just the highlight reel with people because I think that's making us feel more and more alone in this world when we think everybody else has got their shit together and we're the only ones that are messed up. <laughs> and that's not true. We all struggle. Or we feel like, Nobody can help us. We're stuck in this pain. And with my work as a nurse, I realize that people don't fear pain. They fear pain that doesn't end. They fear a pain that's going to continue and they don't know when that end point is. And I think by you not only sharing your story, but sharing that story in hopes to say, I got the steps to get you out of that pain and I'm willing to share that with you. If you've got a great accomplishment or you've overcome that, you've lived that, you've got through that, then share that too because you can help somebody get out of pain. Whatever that pain is, physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, grief, loss, anger, whatever that pain is, we have the solution for each other if you've been through it. But if you don't share that story, you're not going to heal yourself and you're not going to heal others. So I want to give you a little bit of courage and encouragement to say, go share your story. It's so powerful. It's so impactful. And if you need help doing that, that's where message me. We can hop on a 15 minute brainstorming call. And if you're a business owner, I can help you bring that out in your business. If you're a mom, if you're a parent, if you're a wife, and you just want to change the dynamic in your family, I can help you with that as well. So that's my message for today. Hopefully that served and please share your story. I want to hear it. I want to see it and know that I'm behind you all the way. You can be courageous. You can be brave and don't discount that gold that you've got in that story. It really is gold. So share it with others so they can shine. All right, guys, see you again next time.